Praise the Lord. This is Sister Marilyn Belcher, and I'm the pastor of the First United Pentecostal Church of Centerville. And I thank God that you are watching this video today, and I just thank God for another day in the Lord. I thank God that uh, you're my brother. Wherever you're at, you're my brother and you're my sister in the Lord. And, and you know, the Bible teaches us to encourage ourselves, but it also teaches us to encourage each other. And so uh, I just want to do that today. I want to be a, say a word of encouragement. I want to do or say something that will help you along this journey. If you're a Christian and you're working your way home, we're in this together. That There's a saying they used to say, and it says, we're in the same boat. Well, I don't know about the boat, but I can tell you what, we're on the same journey. And so if we can help each other and encourage each other, that's what we need to be doing. I'm going to be preaching the next few minutes on when the church service is over. Now, I was raised in a pastor's home. I'm a PK, a preacher's kid, and, and I've been in church the majority of my life, but nobody is going to be able to ride somebody else's coattail to heaven. Even though my daddy was the pastor and my mama was, of course, the pastor's wife, I had to do my own repentance, and I had to have my own relationship with God, and I have my own walk with with God. And, and so I, I, as being in the church all my life uh, in the church service, you know as apostolics or Pentecostals you know, we like the church when it's a rocking and the music is just, I mean the beats going and all the instruments are playing and the singers are singing and then when all that stops the preacher gets up and preaches a fiery dynamic message and, and we're standing on our feet clapping unto the Lord and, and just really supporting or backing up the preacher. We'll probably find ourselves uh, standing more than we find ourselves sitting. And, and we're all excited in the Holy Ghost. But then the service ends. The lights go out. And most likely the devils that were waiting on you when you walked into that church, they're going to be waiting on you when you walk out of that church. And then what are we going to do? And it's so sad because down through my years of pastoring and in my years in working in the church and being in the church, I have seen so many people start the race, but they don't finish the race. They start the journey. They get hyped up. And, and, and they're motivated by emotions. But then when it's, the hype's not there, and it's just on the everyday of walking, and on the everyday of talking with God, they become bored. They become disinterested. That they lose their enthusiasm. And pretty soon, they're out of the church. But we can't do that. We found last year, in the year 2020, think new ways. More, We had to be more creative than we've ever been as pastors. How to feed the sheep and not still be in the church house. Because under the COVID uh, uh, rules and everything, you know, everything was shut down. Even our church shut down for a, a few weeks. We only shut down a few, very few weeks. And then we opened back up the week before uh, Mother's Day in May of 2020 and kept on having church. But there was a lot of changes and there was a lot of give and take. And, and, and there still are some changes that we have to go through. And we don't like. But one thing we had to learn. We had to learn how to have church without going to church. Because one thing some people never learn. That it's not enough for you or I to be in the church. But the church must be within us. So many people, they start the journey. 
They, they get all hyped up. They love the music. They love the shouting, running around the church and jumping up and down. They love that. But they don't know what to do when they're not in the church house and the musicians not playing and the uh, worship team is not singing and the preacher's not preaching. They don't know what to do and they can't become very bored and they become disinterested and then sad to say they drop out. But today my question is, what do we do when the church service is over? Psalms 122 and verse 1 says, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. David said that. He was glad. How many times have I quoted that? How many times have I claimed that? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And then in Psalms 23 and 6, again the psalmist says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and it sounds like we're going to live at the church house we got a new address we got a new residence it's going to be the church house we said I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever he was saying I will dwell in the presence of of the Lord forever. When the lights go out at the church. When the church door is locked. When there are no services going on in the church. We that we are the church. And we have got to dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. That's what we do. When the church service is over. Over in Psalms 42, the psalmist there is talking. And he's talking about how the heart, H-A-R-T, the heart or the deer, panteth after the water brook. He said, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. He wasn't in the church house. David was not in the church house. He said, my soul panteth or my soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? He said, my tears have been my meat or my growth day and night. While they, talking about the enemy of your soul, the devils that want to torment you. It says, while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? You know, in the wee hours of the night, we hear the voices. And it's not always the voice of God. It's the voices that try to torment us. It's the voices that try to discourage us. And, 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 and I know that we are, we need the fellowship of each other. You're my brother and you're my sister and we need each other. But there's going to be times in our lives that we're not going to be able to be together. And there's going to be times when the church door is not open. But yet, we still got to go forward because we are the church. And the voices are going to say, we're sure God. So David said here in verse 4, he said, I went with them to the house of God. I was one of them that went to church. He said, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. He said, I was one of them. But then he said in verse 5, he's speaking of his discouragement. He's speaking uh, of when he's not in the church or when he's not able to get to the church. He said, why aren't thou cast down on my soul? And why aren't thou disquieted in me? 
But his answer was, Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. He said, I'm, in other words, he said, I'm just going to keep on praising him. I'm going to keep on worshiping. I'm going to keep looking. I'm going to keep looking upward. I may not be in the church house per se. The music is not a playing. The, the worship team's not singing. The preacher's not preaching. But it's got to be within me. It's got to be deep within me that my praise comes up before God. And then in that same chapter 40 two of Psalms in, in there in verse 8 he said there in that scripture he said yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life you know what it boils down to you got to keep keeping on you just got to keep keeping on. Now, we just completed our camp meeting services. And buddy, it was powerful. It was good. But we all knew that if the Lord didn't come and all went well, Friday night was coming. And Friday night was going to be the end of 2021 camp meeting. We all knew it was coming. And God moved. The God moved in a wonderful way. A wonderful way. Spoke to us and broke us to draw us ever closer to Him. And then the church service was over. And now, here it is, another day. There's no church to go to. No church service to go to. But you know what? I'm just going to keep on walking. I'm going to keep on praising. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to talk to myself. The Bible says there, over there in the first Samuel, in the 30th chapter in verse 6, the Bible says, but David, the same very David, that said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now there's a time in David's life, and he can't get to the church, but he knows that the church is within him. And the Bible says. But David. Encouraged himself. In the Lord. They was talking about stoning him. They was talking about doing away with him. Pretty discouraging if you ask me. But David. Encouraged. Himself. In the Lord. We need each other. We, we need not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as we see that day approaching. But brother and sister, you can't rely to have a walk with God just based on going to church. It's got to be within you. One of my very favorite Scriptures is found in the book of Micah. Now, we all go through things. The devil makes sure we do. <laughs> the devil kind of has a rap sheet on every one of us. He's going to see, okay, now when was the last time I made her fall? When was the last time I made her uh, do something that she regretted so deep? So he has like a rap sheet on every one of us and he checks it. And he said, well... It's time for me to make her a visit. But the God that's within me is greater than the God of this world. And so the scripture says in Micah the seventh chapter and verse eight, rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. He didn't say I wasn't going to fall. He didn't say I wasn't going to make mistakes. But what he did say, when I fall, 
I shall arise. I'm coming up from here. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. The Lord shall be a light unto me. So, saint, I want to encourage you. When the church service is over, that doesn't mean God has quit. That doesn't mean that God said, okay, I'm out. Mm -mm. Ain't so, no way, no how. He's still God. And he's still going to help us. And we're still going to make it. As long as we realize it's not enough for us to be in the church. The church, the Lord God Almighty himself has got to be within us. We're going to make it. And I thank God for that. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now giving you the praise for all things. And God, I'm so thankful that you are consistent. You never fail us. You never leave us. God, the lights may go out and the doors may be shut, but you're still God and you are still there. And you're going to help us to make it in spite of everything that comes our way. You're going to help us to be overcomers in the Holy Ghost. And I give you the praise for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.